Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and today's video is not a uh, new revelation. Nintendo hates you and they hate their fans the most. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know that whenever I talk about Nintendo, no matter what, there's always one or two people that always come out and go, By Muda, Nintendo is amazing and they can't be criticized! I'm going to respond to this in a very mature way, okay? Nintendo is a multi-billion dollar company, okay? Nintendo is probably one of the largest companies in all of Japan, okay? No matter how much you slob on that knob, they will not pay attention to you, nor are they going to add you on the payroll, okay? When you criticize companies, you criticize them for the right reasons. And for me, one of those reasons is absolutely turning on your fans, especially when they're really not causing you any harm. Now, way back in the day, all right, Nintendo and YouTube content has a very tumultuous history. Years ago, and we're talking back in 2013, Tons of people who were creating Nintendo content were getting their shit content ID'd, they were getting copyright struck. Nintendo had like an MCN for a little while where you could just jump in and Nintendo would basically like screw you, but at least you got to make your Nintendo content, Jesus Christ. Now of course they've kind of loosened up, but they also haven't. When it comes to fan games and mods, Nintendo, at the slightest drop when they hear somebody is just making a fan game, they will immediately call up their legal team and cease and desist to, to, to no end, all right? Wild. Now, when it comes to YouTube content, I don't know if Nintendo's cool with everyone or if they're not. I guess if you just straight do Let's Plays and, and make Nintendo content, maybe they don't care. But if you're somebody like Point Crow who makes interesting Nintendo content, content that I would like to watch, and you know, not your standard boring Let's Play, then Nintendo has a goddamn problem. Now, of course, Point Crow a day ago released a video where he said, Nintendo is taking down my videos. Now, of course, uh, Point Crow, Eric, actually lists exactly how many videos Nintendo has claimed and have struck. Now, to understand, when your channel gets striked by copyright strikes or content ID strikes, if you have three of them active at any given moment, this can absolutely kill your channel. Having just one strike is already scary. Having two strikes is basically finding God and asking them to like, you know, free you from whatever hell you're stuck in. And then a third strike, you're, so, you're, you're filling out those job applications, okay? It's done. But of course, look at all these videos that Nintendo has went into. So videos like, I made Breath of the Wild multiplayer. Zelda, but if I say Shrek, then 10 Shrek spawn. The Pokemon game where you have a gun. <laughs> I can see why that actually ends up getting claimed by Nintendo USA. Now, of course, even videos that aren't necessarily Zelda oriented, like modded Mario Odyssey, but I added too many mods. Uh, you can see that these are claimed, and in some cases, Nintendo Japan straight up goes and strikes you. Now, of course, this is why I don't typically put Nintendo game content on my channel or show their videos. Anytime I've made content regarding, like, the Steam Deck, for instance, you know when I show you emulators? What's the one game company I don't show you? Nintendo. You want to know why? Because if I showed you a Zelda game running on the Steam Deck... I would be taken down faster than John Wick going after his enemies, okay? It's over. It's done, all right? I might as well be burying my own goddamn grave, which is why I don't go down that route. And as much as I would like to show you cool content, and I'll show you right now, the way I play Breath of the Wild, no joke, is through an emulator known as Seamu. Now, I wish I could show you this footage because if you're looking at the graphic menu that I have, I am able to add extended memory, make the draw distance high as hell, change the frame rate to 60 and above, and of course add various graphical enhancements to my game. Now I wish I could show you footage, but if you want to see this, just go to the little YouTube search bar right, out, right above here, you know, open up a new tab, type in Breath of the Wild, like 4K CMU ray tracing, you know, preset. That's how I play the game, okay? Got tier. And I don't play this on a regular Wii U or a Switch. You know why? Because those are baby consoles, okay? I'm not going to play an amazing game like Breath of the Wild at, like, Fisher-Price resolution. At, like, homeless resolutions, all right? Okay? All right? Like, homeless frame rates. We're not even talking 30. We're talking, oh, shit, maybe you're lucky if you get 24. All right, just barely enough for it to be, like, you know, affecting your brain and telling you that it's a moving, like, you know, video versus, like, a picture. Whatever, okay? You get the point. I like to play games 
blown up on my computer with the extra horsepower that I bought, all right? And you know what? I think most Nintendo games should be played like that. When Tears of the Kingdom drops, you know how I'm gonna be playing it? Not on a fucking Switch, no, 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 no. If I can, I'm gonna be running that in the Switch emulator, okay? I'm gonna crank that resolution up. I'm gonna see if I can double the frame rate, but I'm gonna have a great time. And uh, would I show you footage of it? No, because if I did, Nintendo would nuke me. Now, of course, uh, Eric, all right, who uh, unfortunately has had his videos taken down, has pretty much begged Nintendo to, like, you know, stop bugging them, stop going after them. And now, at the end of the day, this is a problem because Nintendo owns these IPs, meaning that they are 100% in their legal right to take these videos down, all right? Nobody can say no to Nintendo. Even if you were in the right, Nintendo is such a large company that their legal team could absolutely nuke anybody. Even if Nintendo was probably 100% in the wrong, because they have such a legal might, they can buy out and win any court they wanted. They could literally drain you of your life savings before you would even get far enough in court for it to even matter. And that's just the sad reality of the legal system, but that's not the focal point of the video. The idea here is that Nintendo is large enough and they take down whatever content you want, and that is what it is. It's totally Nintendo's legal right, and yes, we agree. But there is a ethical and moral problem. What Eric is doing is he's creating content using Nintendo's IP. Now, at the end of the day, the people that were buying Breath of the Wild bought that shit when it came out. And of course, as you go on forward, game sales dwindle. If it's anything content creators do is they keep your game alive well after its initial sales cycle. Now there's plenty of other games that have benefited from mod support. For instance, this is 5M, which is a GTA 5 mod that allows you to basically expand the multiplayer beyond whatever Rockstar is offering. Now, Rockstar could go out of their way and probably take these guys down uh, for utilizing their IP, but this is over 100,000 individuals playing 5M. And as you all know, GTA consistently goes on sale all the time. Like here's a, right now it's 63% off. Now, of course, Rockstar doesn't need this mod to sell, but this mod is played by a lot of people and it's also streamed by tons of very popular influencers like Summit 1G, like XQC. Rockstar understands that just by having the community constantly play their games and mod them, it ultimately bleeds back into them making sales. It's not just them. If you go to Nexus Mods, the highest games, the, the, the games with the most mods right now are pretty much all Bethesda games. So Skyrim Special Edition, Skyrim, Fallout, Fallout New Vegas, Oblivion, you name it. And of course, Bethesda doesn't make some crazy good games, but they make really moddable experiences. It's one of the reasons why they're selling hundreds of thousands of copies of uh, Elder Scroll games and Fallout games. Obviously those games are still popular, but well after its initial cycle, they're still selling Skyrim like crazy. It's insane. So yeah, obviously mods and community creating content for these video games keeps them very much alive. So what Eric is doing is effectively advertising the game and basically creating content that keeps it alive and keeps people jumping in. There are people that probably would never care about Legend of Zelda. And if they watch one of his videos, which I watched one of his videos about Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild multiplayer, where they had a mod that allowed people to play together, that would get somebody who didn't care about the franchise to jump in and maybe consider going out to buy a Switch, buy Breath of the Wild, and play the game right there. Now, I would go out of my way to get Breath of the Wild and mod it simply because, believe it or not, there is a couch co-op mod for Breath of the Wild on the Wii U. Four people can sit together and, and play Breath of the Wild cooperatively. This is a cool mod, but I don't know if Nintendo would be okay with it because again, they have a weird scenario when people mod and people showcase footage of their video games in any fun capacity. So again, I could kind of understand when Nintendo was going after like Steam Deck emulators or Steam Deck emulation videos because, you know, people could be like, why buy a Switch? Just buy a deck and play, you know, Switch games on there. I could kind of understand it there, but I can't understand it when Nintendo goes after a creator like Point Crow and takes down their videos, even though at the end of the day, I highly doubt he's hurting their brand, he's stealing away sales. If anything, he's bringing more people in to care about this game franchise. Literally Nintendo, if they just decided to maybe share his video on like a social media channel and say, wow, we're really impressed with what the community is doing. Hey, by the way, in a couple of weeks, we're releasing a new Zelda game. Maybe go check that out. It would infinitely, 
infinitely be the greatest PR move by this company. Now, I had a little bit of time to sleep on it, obviously. Time has changed, but uh, I wanted to really get out of the meat of this, and I think the big problem is obviously emulation. I don't think Nintendo has a real problem if you play the game unmodded vanilla on a Switch. But obviously to make the videos that Point Crow, and honestly, it can extend to even speedrunners, because a lot of them use emulation as well. It could even include uh, people who are using randomizers. Again, another form of modification. It, it, I think the real issue is the game files have been modified, right? It's running on an emulator, or the files have been modded by the actual you know creator. Uh, and I think that's really the real problem Nintendo is having. And honestly, I think Nintendo is a little bit too uh, set in their ways to change things around because there's tons of other game publishers that benefit, that benefit from having modded footage. You know, for instance, could you imagine if Elden Ring or, or Bando Namkai, uh, Namco Bandai, <laughs> there it is, if that company came in and decided, hey, we're going to start removing footage of Elden Ring because you guys are using the amazing... Um, seamless co-op mod, which allows everyone to play cooperatively together for people without using, you know, from software's bizarre, shitty networking systems. Imagine if they started removing footage of that. Imagine if Rockstar started removing footage of mods. You know, I already know Rockstar goes after mods that leak their internal, you know, or sorry, like share their resources or share their assets, which again, is totally within their right. But I don't actually believe that Rockstar is going out of the way to take down mod footage, although I could be wrong. There's too many GTA videos to keep account of. But the idea is Nintendo is obviously a little bit too set in their ways and they really need to loosen up. You know, at the end of the day, this kind of content draws more people in than it actually takes people out. Maybe Nintendo assumes that people are, you know, promoting piracy by using emulation, which yes, people who do emulate, there are a chunk of them that do also pirate the video game. Just like there's a lot of those people that just back up their original, you know, files like me and play that. At the end of the day, I think what Nintendo is doing is burning too much positive PR uh, by going after somebody who creates content who revitalizes their brand and ultimately, you know, uh, gets people hyped up for the for the next iteration of Zelda. And I think it's a terrible time to be doing this, especially when they got a new Zelda game coming out. But Honestly, I think that's where I'm going to end it off at, ladies and gentlemen. When dealing with Nintendo, there is no easy way. Nintendo does not care about you. They do not like you. They do not have any care about you. As long as they keep making money, that's all that'll ever matter. And I think, to be honest with you, if you're a creator, if you're somebody who's on YouTube, maybe don't create Nintendo content, okay? Because the moment you start getting really interesting with your content is the moment they will start going after you. And if you've built your brand around Nintendo, I would be very worried. That's why you should keep your eggs in multiple baskets, diversify around, and uh, call it a day. But I think this is one of those situations where Point Crow had to have known what he was getting into. It's one of the reasons why for years I've never really made Nintendo content. Because I understand that Nintendo is you know, just a bunch of like fucking pussies when it comes to this kind of shit. And uh, instead of giving them an in to screw up my channel and screw up my fun... I'm just not going to bother covering them. It's it's a bridge that they have burned, and it's a bridge that, you know, will remain burned. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm going to end it where it's at. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I am out.